It is my pleasure to introduce Daniel Coster. Um, I first learned about Daniel many, many years ago uh, via my wife, as a matter of fact, back when Daniel was a camper at Camp Quest Smoky Mountains. Uh, and Amanda came to me and she was like, you know, all of our campers are so amazing and smart, but there's this one, he wrote us this feedback on our proposed mission, vision, and values, and it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and uh, and that, that came from Daniel. And she was like, you've got you've to make sure that uh, this young man gets involved in the Secular Student Alliance. And, uh, and that connection was made. Uh, and at his high school, he ended did start a Secular Student Alliance group. Uh, and they went on to hand out uh, atheist literature to protest uh, biblical literature being handed out. It was pretty spectacular, got in the news and exciting things like that. Uh, and now Daniel is at the University of Central Florida and he's involved with the SSA at UCF and he is very excited uh, about making that group the best group in the world and also learning to recognize every font ever made. Mm -hmm. So please help me in welcoming Daniel Coster. That font is universe. So I always learn so much about myself in these intros and so I gotta keep coming to these so I learn about myself. Uh, okay, so we as secular students have shown ourselves to be amazingly capable organizers and activists. We've made our campuses safer for secular students and for all religious minorities. And we've made our administrators more aware of their responsibility to treat everybody fairly, no matter what their religious affiliation is. But if we're going to be better than that, if we're going to be the most po powerful force for good than we could possibly be, then we need to recognize who our allies are in the world. And they're all around us, they're very close to us. They're the atheist, humanist, secular, humanist, activist, skeptic groups in our areas. Uh, these people meet all the time, they probably meet very close to you wherever you are, and I think they're an important resource for you. Uh, if we want to embody the notion that we are the present and not just the future of this movement, it's going to be by connecting ourselves with these other fantastic allies. My introduction to the secular movement was by Orlando Skeptics. I went on meetup.com, which is a resource that we'll talk about later, and uh, just typed in atheist, and it turned out that Orlando Skeptics was just starting up and had their first meeting a few days after that. And uh, this is the story of the time that I was 15 and I convinced my mom to drive me downtown and leave me at a pub in the care of a bunch of stranger atheists. <laughs> Um, and that is what led me on the dark spiraling paths that led here, so I'll leave it to your good judgment whether my mom made a wise decision. Uh, at Orlando Skeptics, I, I met people, or you know, I, I listened to how they organized, I watched the structure of the group, and I met people that I still work with and collaborate with today, five years later. And I don't think it's too late for any student organizer to make that same kind of connection and get those same kinds of benefits. So what are the benefits that you can get? Uh, we'll start with money and get it out of the way. Uh, when, as much as we all love petitioning our, um, our allocations committees uh, for funding for our events, they sometimes see fit in their infinite wisdom not to give us the money that we ask for. And for all cases like that, there are organizations that have money uh, set aside for putting on events, for spreading the word, and we are a form of spreading that word. So they will help you. Uh, in my first year of college, I was talking to Daryl Ray, uh, and he said, hey, you should have me come out to the college. They're all open-minded and, and fun. They'll love hearing me. And uh, there was, I had never brought a speaker before. I'd never handled that kind of event. There was no Secular Student Alliance on campus that could help me run the event, and I had no reason to think that anybody would show up anyway. Uh, anyway. So obviously I agreed to host Daryl Ray. Uh, I had to do everything myself. Um, it was very intense. And a couple weeks before the event, I hadn't even gotten a hold of the allocations committee, much less had the chance to get uh, denied funding. So I, uh, the only resource that I had left, certainly not my own bank, was uh, the humanist group in the area. So I called them late at night, probably woke up the president, uh, and said, you know, explain the situation. And he said, how much do you need? And will a check be OK? So I changed the name of the event from Daryl Ray at New College to Daryl Ray brought to you by Humanists of Sarasota Bay. And uh, so students got to see a great speaker that they wouldn't have otherwise. The humanist group got to promote itself to a new demographic it wouldn't have otherwise. And everyone was happy, except for all the students who were outraged by the mere existence of Daryl Ray. But when they expressed their outrage, there were also lots of members of the humanist community there to console me. 
uh, and it was brutal. But they were essential to making that event happen, and I grew a lot, and I think Daryl did too. I think, um, because he said it was unlike any other speaking engagement he'd done. Um, so, you can get money. What else can you get? Well, you can get wisdom. Because these are people who've been in organizing forever, or at least for a lot longer than any of us have. I don't think any of us have been in it for more than a few years. Um, so, Secular Student Alliance Nationals has done a great job of compiling every problem that a group could possibly face and providing a specific answer for how to deal with it. And while that is an invaluable resource, there's something to be said for sitting down with someone who's experienced and talking through a problem. And so as you get closer with these groups and you understand the, and they come to understand the specific culture of your group, they'll be able to sit down with you and talk through these kinds of problems. Uh, because a, a secret that I've discovered is that none of the problems that we encounter as secular student organizers are new to secular student organizing. The people are people and they're going to try to ruin your day in similar ways no matter what kind of organization you are. Uh, so if you have a member who rejects your meeting agenda and substitutes his own, you can go sit, uh, sit down with the uh, your friends in the local community talk through these problems and they will be able to call on their endless wisdom to help you deal with this kind of thing. Uh, and occasionally you'll be able to do the same for them. Uh, you have no idea how impressed the humanist group was with my knowledge of the Facebook. So there's money and wisdom and the third thing is activist opportunities. Because let's say a group like American Atheists wants to put on a demonstration at a, a courthouse or, or some city council uh, building. They want lots of members of the community to be there to make a powerful showing. And so what's most likely is that they're going to contact either their local affiliate or any other community groups they know of in the area, the atheists, the humanists, the skeptics, and ask them to show up. Uh, it's not so likely that they're going to reach out to secular student alliances because that's just not the kind of groups that they usually interact with. But if all these local groups know that you exist, they will call you to try to multiply their numbers and make a bigger impact. So they'll call you, have you come out, then you get a chance to do the kind of work that your group formed to do in the first place. Uh, you get to make a difference in the world and you get to hang out with Silverman, uh, which is exciting anyway, but if any of you are looking at a future in the secular movement like I am, then hanging out with Silverman can only be a good thing. So there's money, wisdom, and activist opportunities. But how do you know any of these groups will want to help you in the first place? Well, just as it's in your best interest to find younger members who can take over your club after you get hit by a bus, these groups are going to want to find younger people who can take over their groups after they retire and join humanist groups in Florida. So uh, they will recognize you as an investment in the future. Uh, they, they know that if they help you out now, you'll appreciate the value of these groups and you'll want to ensure that they continue uh, after they can't lead them anymore, which is a great opportunity for you anyway, and so you'll want to have an in with those leaders if that's something that interests you. So there are ways to find these groups, believe it or not, and uh, judging by the demographics of this conference, I probably don't need to tell you that Google and Facebook are good places to start. Just type in atheist, skeptic, and then the name of your town, or whatever terms. Uh, but a resource you need to know that uh, you most likely don't is meetup.com. Anyone use meetup? Oh, okay. Well, I'm probably not going to ask for audience participation anymore. <laughs> uh, Meetup.com, website that allows social groups to, uh, or whatever kinds of groups to publish their groups, information about themselves, uh, write out their meeting times and everything. Uh, they have groups about everything, food and staying active and about people who have opinions about specific fonts. Uh, there are groups for all of these people and of course there are atheist groups. Uh, I was able to find 13 groups in Columbus, just the Columbus area by searching words like atheist, skeptic, all of those words, uh, humanist, secular. And I'm pretty sure that even if you live in the middle of nowhere, you will probably find someone within a decent distance uh, uh, who can be your friend. So go on all these websites, look for groups, uh, get in as many as you can, and go to as many meetings as you can. Anything that looks fun, these guys will do bowling or meet in bars or play jazz together or paintball or space travel. Anything that you see these groups doing is a good opportunity for you to get in touch with somebody uh, important in the movement. Um, and, and just show up to lots of things. Uh, once you start getting involved with one group, it's pretty likely that anyone there will be able to tell you about lots of the other groups. You know, the atheists will know about the skeptics and the humanists. But be cautious because, in my experience, members of one group will have very specific opinions about the character of members of other groups. Don't take their word for it. Go to lots of groups and form your own opinions. And if you find a group to be of weak moral standing, then you, then you make that decision for yourself. Um, 
but be good skeptics and find out for yourself and be very open-minded. Go to lots of things, even things that seem somewhat tangential to our goals. Uh, you've probably heard the Unitarians uh, mentioned before. Uh, in my opinion, the Unitarians are mostly just atheists with buildings, which is fine with me. Although I've heard the accusation that maybe atheists are just Unitarians without buildings. Uh, so, so hang out with people, you know, anyone, and especially people who are kind of different than you will probably be able to offer wisdom that you wouldn't have even, you know, that would not be so common in the secular movement. So you get different perspective by reaching out to different groups. So getting involved is easy. Just show up. 80% of this talk really is about showing up. Just show up to any of these meetings of any of these groups. Uh, hang out with people. Talk to people. Make sure you get a chance to talk to whatever organizers. Get their contact information. And keep in touch with them. Over time, as they become more familiar with you, you become more friendly, they'll be able to offer you all the things that we talked about. Um, you know, I, I leave it to your good judgment how long to wait before asking them to fund your events. Um, so that's how you get in touch with them. Um, oh, and it's a good gesture to invite them to your group's meetings, because not only will that give you a better sense of, um, that will give them a better sense of, uh, you know, the culture of your group and uh, how to, you know, what kind of framework they're working with uh, when they try to help you out. Um, but it's just, a, yeah, it's just a good gesture. They'll appreciate it. Just be sure to explain in very good detail how to park on your campus, because it's never easy. Um, Okay, so that is the secret to becoming connected with everyone. And the real point is that there are lots of incredible people in this movement. Almost everyone in this movement, uh, all the organizers are incredible. They do amazing work. They work very, very hard. A few people in this movement are so well known that everyone in this crowd has probably read 40% of their books. Uh, everyone knows who they are. They, they've gotten wide recognition. But for each one of them, there is a mass crowd of organizers and activists who will never get that kind of recognition, who always stay in the background doing work at the local level. These are the people who are giving secular invocations at their government meetings to try to counter all the religious invocations. These are people who are alerting their national organizations of violations that happen uh, at the local level. These people are indispensable to the success of what we do and to reaching our goals. Um, they're not as obvious to find, but if you seek them out, I think they can benefit you far more than any of the big names can because they'll be close to you. They're, they're right where you live. Uh, they have the same goals that you are, which is to make this movement the most powerful force for good that it can possibly be. And they want badly to help you. All you have to do is let them. Thank you. Questions? Has anybody reached out to a uh, community group yet with their group? Oh, good. How'd it go? I'm actually kind of operating from a local secular group and trying to extend into the college. Interesting. So it's, actually a, it's actually a bit of a reverse. Interesting. How's it going? Uh, I'm sorry. How's it going? Um, well, I'm trying to get the ball rolling. I mean, okay. Uh, from a small, from a fairly small, you know, more conservative town. Sure. Um, and I'm Where? Where? Uh, almost broke Kentucky. Cool. About two hours west of Louisville. Well, is there an SSA yet at the college you're working with? Uh, there is an SSA at Western Kentucky University. I'm trying to extend it to the satellite campus, which is in my town. Oh, I see. Is the satellite campus a lot of commuters? Um, I would say it is exclusively commuters. So, yes. Uh, that's tough. Starting an SSA at a commuter campus is really tough because people don't want to drive back out for the meeting. Um, well, I mean, the, I would imagine it's a lot easier to start with the, the college that already has an SSA group. I mean, have you had any success yet or is this sort of a new venture? I'm just, kinda, I'm just getting the ball rolling. Sure, sure. Um, well, uh, I think everyone here is enjoying the conference, so you have a sense of the kind of tone they like. And Yeah, I mean, there, there are no easy answers, but I think um, they should be receptive to it. Uh, don't be afraid to sort of, well, definitely don't be afraid to attend their meetings. You know, that's, that's a good gesture to start with. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that goes really well. I think it's worth doing. I'm glad someone's doing it. Anyone else had success as a college student reaching out? What happened? Yeah, so we were hosting an Earth Day event for uh, this past April, and we needed speakers. And we had some professors from the university, but I thought that it might be nice to have somebody from like, a faith perspective. So we reached out to all the campus groups and nobody wanted to do it because it was the Secular Student Alliance that was hosting it. 
Um, so I actually went to the UU, and their reverend was really excited about that. He'd just been like waiting for the secular students <laughs> to contact him. So he yeah, came and spoke, and I, I feel like reaching out is actually a lot easier. It's like just taking that first step. Hear that? He was waiting for you to contact them. I wish he'd reached out to you, but sometimes people don't, so you got to take that step. And then it was easy, right? Yeah. It just it just rolled from there. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do. Your experience will definitely be that easy, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> there will be no impediment. Yeah. Um, I'm in a, a, a group in San Diego, and Ooh. one of the challenges with reaching out to the SSA is the lack of continuity with the representatives. And a lot of times, what's happened is we would establish a relationship with someone, and then they leave, and then the person coming in isn't familiar with the relationship and what has gone on. And, right. And it's, it, it works both ways, of course, as far as uh, the benefits. Um, we want the numbers of the students. We want the, to be able to use the rooms on campus for events mm -hmm. if we can get them. Sure. Um, and we want them to attend our events as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it does work that, that way. The, uh, the other, co the Coalition of Reason is also uh, a resource mm -hmm. for to find local event, uh, local groups. Oh yeah. And our, our local Coalition of Reason um, uh, gathers all of the events from the 18, I mean, I'm from San Diego, from the 18 uh, secular groups that are in San Diego. 18, that's there. awesome. So, and, and two of those groups are um, SSA groups. Okay. In the Coalition of Reason. I, I seriously doubt that there are any problems in the world that can't be solved with more networking. So I wonder if any of those 18 groups has had more success reaching out to the students that you, than you have. If you know of a group that has a good relationship with those students, network with them. Make sure that um, they're promoting your events at their events. You know, use the, if they've already done the hard work of getting that connection with students, I say exploit that uh, for your own gain uh, because it's ultimately for the gain of all of us. Um, there are no easy answers, but I think throwing more networking at the problem is a good start. How are we doing on time? Good. So that like eight minutes. Oh, what can we do for eight minutes? So no one would be too out in the cold if I did let you go down. Oh no, wait, you can't go yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm from the after the um, our local affiliate in um, at the University of Florida, mm -hmm. and we were talking with uh, Mike B, who's the president at um, the FSU group. Oh, okay. You're trying to coordinate maybe like some field trips to go to FSU or then come to UF or else thinking maybe about trying to coordinate something with uh, UCF as well. Yes, you can come to UCF. You, I invite you now. Come to UCF. And vice versa. Okay. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Uh, I'll stop on the way back. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if this is a secret, but... Um, no one's here, so it's okay. Uh, the one of the one of the Florida, the Tallahassee one, was talking about trying to get a uh, a conference of Florida SSAs going, um, so that we just all go to Tallahassee and do this, but Florida people, and try to bring in speakers. And I think that's an awesome idea. I think that I do. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Uh, talk to your regional coordinators. That's also a good idea. But. Uh, yeah, I think I want to see us, as Director of Activism, one of the things that I want to see our group do better is network with the other groups in the state. That's something that I'm going to take on in the coming year uh, with SSA UCF. I think that's another thing worth encouraging. Because um, like I said, and I, I should probably make this a part of my talk, but I only just thought of it now, that I don't think there are any problems that can't be solved with more networking. And so if you're networking with more groups, then that's also going to give you inroads with any of the community groups there. Um, SSA UCF is pretty well connected with uh, some of the state level groups as opposed to the local ones. And so if that's something you're interested in, you can use SSA UCF as inroads to these state groups. Um, just the more that we're talking to each other and sharing information with each other, the more likely we are to know about any relevant event anywhere in the state or in the region. Um, it, it can't hurt to just talk all the time to each other and never do anything else. Yeah? Do you have any suggestions for like thinking outside the box as far as you mentioned uh, skeptics groups and mm -hmm. views? I live in a small town and I searched and searched and there was like a Midwest Humanist Society for about a summer <laughs> and 
I joined it and was super enthused, and then it just kind of died off. That's mm. the closest thing to an actual group. I'm wondering if there's any, any other sort of uh, types of groups that might you might be able to network with and find like-minded people. Yeah, save me the trouble. Um, kind of with that, it, some of them could be some of the groups that you're being activists for. So gay, lesbian, community, different minority groups, anything that you can find that are activists. Similarly, a lot of them will also be atheists and humanists. It's just if they don't have another group to go to, they're working on the causes, and, and that can help as well. So I know, yeah, coming from a, a more rural, conservative area originally, I didn't know of anyone else out there. So sometimes just getting that information out that with a student group will get people thinking, of, hey, there are people here who need this. We can get one going for the you know, students as well. I think it takes a very little bit to sort of cognitively give people permission to do that kind of organizing. I mean, when I was very young, there was someone in my life who I knew was an atheist, and that just gave me permission to entertain the idea that that's a way of thinking. And so I think if you just, if, if you're, I mean, that's what Orlando Skeptics did, is gave me permission to try to bring people together in that way. Um, and so, uh, yeah, if your group is vocal and making a lot of noise, then it's much more likely to trigger that in people. Just because there isn't a group right now doesn't mean there aren't more than enough people in your area to start that group. Um, as to thinking out of the, outside the box with, uh, with groups, I guess if you're really desperate, you could talk to some lefty churches. Um, but that's an out there suggestion. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if you went to like, the, if you got sort of involved with the Democratic Party, if the people who are active there wouldn't know of some other groups that are kind of, I wouldn't rule out the Republicans. Um, or at least I wouldn't suggest that other people rule out the Republicans. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think it's, it's too radical to say that the Democrats would be a place to start. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, just different yeah. fandoms. You know, so nerds. Clients, nerdiness, you know, yeah. there's a lot of us in those too that have come together. <laughs> just go hang out at the local science lab. <laughs> go hang out at the local science lab and uh, accost people outside, because <laughs> scientists are all you know them. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess just keep moving one by one notches away from what you'd expect. And yeah, I could see political parties. You know, you're probably not going to want to work with a political party as such, but it could be a gateway drug. Um, drugs, that's really the answer. Okay, I think we have like one minute left. Okay, one more minute of dinner. Yeah. Okay, good, all right, thanks so much, guys. Yeah.